You ever have one of those leaders? Anyway, this is my story. So my first job out of college, I'm an engineer by trade, right? So I started out an electrical engineer, graduated, went to work for a government contracting firm. You know the name, by the way. Uh, it's a large government contracting firm. And my first boss, his name was, we'll just call him Bob, right? We'll just call him Bob. And Bob was one of these managers, one of these leaders that was a real, was a little bit of a control freak. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, just a real control freak. And so I remember my part of my job was to put together proposals. And these would be like thirty, forty, maybe fifty thousand dollar proposals that I would put together. And these were on components that would actually go into their, let's say, planes or tanks or whatever it may be. And I remember every time I'd finish a proposal, I'd walk into Bob's office and Bob, I would hand the proposal to Bob, right? Bob would always have a red felt pen right here, right? And so he would grab the proposal, pop the cap, take the take the pen out of his shirt, pop the cap, and then just start basically editing my proposal, right? And by the time he handed it back to me, uh, it was just bleeding, if you know what I mean, because all was just marked up, right? And he says, yeah, make those changes and then bring it back to me and I'll sign it. And so I was like, okay, so I'll go back to my desk, my cubicle, make the changes, come back and boom, same thing. He grabbed the proposal, pop the cap off his belt pen, mark it up again, send me back. And on average, this would happen like three to five times. Every time I brought a bidder proposal, it would happen every, you know, like three to five times I'd have to go back and forth to my cubicle. And after a while, you know, what started to happen was I was I didn't invest as much time in the proposal because I'm thinking, well, he's going to edit it anyway. So why put in the work, right? So my, my quality of work went down because I'm thinking, why invest if all he's going to do is edit? He never really explained why he would edit things the way he did. He just said, just go make the changes, right? Suffice it to say, I didn't last at that job too long. I just left after about maybe three years which I think was two years too much. And the next job I had, I was working for a wireless company. Uh, again, started out as an application engineer. And in this case, my boss's name was Tom. The first proposal I had to put together was for, I think it's like $1.1 million. So we're not talking $50,000. We're talking $1.1 million, I think was my first proposal. So I remember I finished this huge proposal, walked into Tom's office with this three ring binder, right? And I handed the proposal to Tom. Right, And Tom grabs his pen, looks at the proposal, opens it up, goes to the first page. He reads the executive summary, right? And then he says, okay. Then he flips all the way to the back of the proposal where the financials are, and he looks at the system, the configuration, the total price, but more importantly, the margins that we're making on this deal. And he looked at me and he says, is everything in here? And I remember I said, yeah, everything's in there. He said, okay, grab this pen and sign the contract and handed me the three ring binder. And I'm like stunned. I'm like, like, like stunned, genuinely like what just happened, right? And I walked out of his office still stunned. And then this, this terror, this fear washes over me. Like he signed it. It's like, oh, sorry. It's like he signed it, you know? And I'm like in a panic mode because I thought for sure he was going to make some edits and he didn't. And I remember I went over to this engineer, his name was Roy. And I went over to Roy, who was the lead engineer. I said, Roy. And I told the story. I said, I just walked into Tom's office. I, I gave him the first bid and he looked at it. I said, he just signed it. And Roy looks at me like, yeah, and? And I go, but he didn't review it. He's, he, he didn't review it. He just signed it, I said. And he says, and I remember this. He said, well, that's your job, not his. And I remember those words cut right through me. Do you know what I mean? It was like they cut right through me because I never thought about it. And what he was saying is that Tom didn't hire you so he can review your work. He expects you to do your work. And I realized that there are two different mindsets when it comes to a, a good leader. The first leader I had was all about control, right? Almost like theory X, command and control. Just do what I tell you to do. Don't ask questions. Just do what I tell you to do. With Tom, it was totally different. He's theory Y, which is he delegates and gives you that autonomy, that responsibility, so you can grow. And I remember uh, uh, a few years ago, I read a book by Daniel Pink. I don't know if you read it. It's a book called Drive. It's a great book, by the way. Highly recommend it. I read it twice. And in there, Daniel Pink talks about, aside from purpose, what motivates people to want to like be part of a company, be part of a team. And it's autonomy and mastery. Autonomy and mastery. Now, think about those. Autonomy is... The ability to do things your way, the way you want to do them, and mastery is the ability to grow, right? To learn things. 
And Tom understood this. I bet, you know, it maybe intuitively understood it, but it's like he goes, it's not my job to review your work. It's your job to make sure that your jo your work is done right, which is why I hired you. It's kind of like a, like a Steve Jobs thing, right? I didn't hire you to tell you what to do. I hired you so you can do something so I don't have to think about it. And I, I to this day, Tom remains one of those leaders, one of those managers that has impacted my life because Tom gave me something back that Bob has stolen. When I was working for Bob, I, my, my quality of work suffered because I just didn't want to put it in the time. My motivation suffered because I just didn't want to do it. And as a result of that, my confidence just was like ugh, through the floor. And Tom gave me that back. When he allowed me to do things my way, it gave me that confidence. It gave me that motivation. And, I, you know, to this day, again, I'll, I'll repeat, he's one of the best leaders. We all have leaders that as we look back at our career, we go, that right there was an impactful leader. Tom was an impactful leader. Oh, by the way, did we win that deal? No, we didn't. It happens.